First off, let me say that so far I've never gotten involved with YouTube scuffles and arguments. I don't even do response videos because the two times that I've done them out of the 140 videos that I have felt like a waste of time. I didn't even do a comment on Thunderfoot vs. Dawa Films debate, even though I think he handled the diplomacy of his video poorly and made sweeping generalizations, but Dawa Films knew what Thunderfoot was trying to say and just wanted to play the martyr and freak out, then feel big and bad by counter-threatening with power he didn't have. Dawa could have played the moral high ground and corrected Thunder on his generalizations, but he uh, instead went with the macho route. Thunderfoot went on to make it into a pissing contest and both ended up making asses of themselves. Luckily, it fizzled out. Sadly, Pat Condell's newest videos pushed me to the point where I had to say something about it. The people on his side don't seem to grasp what it is that his critics like Rith and Coughlin seem to have. Uh, they're arguing with, uh, well, all atheists have different arguments and different opinions, and you shouldn't be jumping all over him uh, because he um, he's not following with, with the atheist lockstep. That's not the argument here. Um... I tend to break things down to their basic levels, so I hope I can add some insight on this debate, as diplomacy is not really Coughlin's style. First thing I've noticed is that several Condell defenders have been saying uh, that we're calling him a racist. Uh, racist is a subgroup of bigotry. I can call you a bigot and not call you a racist. I've never seen Coughlin call Pat that. Uh, people who confuse the two need to go buy a dictionary, and if you're using this uh, attack on us, claiming that we're calling you racist, uh, you're using a straw man there, and that's something creationists use. Uh, secondly, Islamophobia. Let's break this down. Phobias are irrational fears or irrational levels of reaction to fear. I, like most Americans, have gastroentomological phobia. The idea of eating bugs disgusts me, even though our ancestors and many people around the world eat them and are possibly both healthier and uh, better environmentally for it. Uh, this is pretty much how most homophobes are, to the point that they want to stop others from doing it. There are also the type of people with phobias that have an overreacting and uncontrollable level of fear. Not that the fear isn't real and not legitimate, but it's overreacting. I fear global warming. It scared the crap out of me once I discovered the depth and understanding that it was real. I began doing everything I could to reduce my carbon footprint and get other people to reduce theirs to the point of annoyance. Cortisol, the stress hormone, makes it difficult for neurons to communicate properly, and in abundance, it is ridiculously bad side effects on the brain and body. Uh, more information is in the link in the bottom. This fear that I had for the environment made me throw all skepticism out the window, and if it said green on it, I would be more likely to believe and use it. It wasn't until I realized that I was so stressed out that I wasn't enjoying any of the short life I had, then I began to calm down and realize that A, there have always been major threats and crises throughout history, B, there was nothing I could do about it besides calmly and rationally raise awareness and do my part, and C, my stress was making me inefficient, and annoying and I appeared to be a bit fanatical and crazy. After a certain point I began to discuss it more calmly and factually. I began to just lead by example and got several people to change their views on how to live just by doing something different and explaining my rationale for it instead of freaking out if you're not doing it. This is why almost all of my videos are calm and educational as opposed to fear, offense, or emotion driven. Less will be interested, but more will be likely to change their minds logically and not recklessly if they do so. When Pat first started raising awareness of the problems of fundamentalist Islam and Sharia law, I was very grateful. I knew and probably still know very little about European politics, but I try and educate myself on it as much as I can. He pointed out clear and serious problems and examples of such. As he progressed, though, he became more stressed and fearful and made accusations. I worried a little for his health, but gave him the benefit of the doubt. At a certain point, my skepticism began pulling up red flags, but I didn't know enough yet. He seemed constantly stressed. This latest video and the source of his concern suddenly made him sound like a nut. Like the paranoid birthers and tea partiers that we're so familiar with here in the U.S. Pat and his followers do not seem to understand what our main beef is on the issue. The problem is with the source material. If I as a scientist were to use articles from the Discovery Institute, my credibility as a scientist would be wrecked. No one would ever take me seriously again. 
the way you use source material is you look at all the source has to say. If there are blatant and verifiable lies and inaccuracies, then you should probably move on to a different source. There will always be errors, but that's human nature. A way to discover credibility is if they correct mistakes or errors when they are pointed out, which is why science is a self-correcting system. Places like the Discovery Institute, Eric Von Daniken, and the Birthers are not credible sources. They never change based on new evidence or issue changes based on errors. Instead of taking info from WorldNet Daily, you should have looked for more info from a source that was more logic based and less paranoid based. You should have seen if a more independent source with more credibility will confirm what the findings are and use that source instead. Islamic Mafia I'm sure sounded logical, but if the scope and perspective is narrowed and they have a faulty premise, then logic will not equal truth. Pat Condell is one of the founders of YouTube Atheism. He helped me and so many others think in entertaining ways about how to question other reasons for not believing in a god using logic, reason, and humor. Which is why it's so sad to see him destroy his credibility and use his standing with people who may have deconverted because of him to spread anti-skeptical and errant information. His less skeptical followers will eat it up and not question it, of course. Coughlin has a huge following already. I'm fairly certain he was initially inspired by Condell. Pat, however, let his fear override his skepticism to the point that he is completely unskeptical of his own fear and unable to view the fear in terms of perspective. Coughlin does not need the subs. He is a star in his own right. In the scientific community, however, if you see an error, especially if you have clout, you point it out before the error can do damage. Coughlin has subclout, and that is why... He called Pat out. If you're an atheist, just because God logically doesn't make sense to you, and uh, that was the only reason why, then go believe whatever you want, uh, you know, lockstep based on whoever said it, you know. But if you're an atheist because you want to be as scientifically accurate and close to the truth as possible, then you have to pay close attention and scrutinize all your beliefs regardless of who told you. If anyone tells you anything that does not agree with your thinking, even if told by me, reject it. Gautama Siddhartha, the Buddha. Thank you.